I'm life and confidence coach Diana Leader, and this is my podcast, The Crave More Life Roadshow. It's here we talk about emotional hits and lovingly kicking our own asses to get through them. Just so you know, it always comes down to being your beautiful, sassy self, living and loving from you, no matter what. So join me to hear about the healing journeys of other women, and you just might become a DIY ass kicker too. Hey, DIY ass kickers, welcome back to the road show. Nora Imri is my guest today. Nora is a career educator and a mom with a story about finding the silver lining within a devastating family experience. She is also the author of the chapter, My Shattered Heart Beats Stronger, in the first edition of Find Your Voice, Save Your Life. You'll find Nora's full bio in the show notes. Welcome to the show, Nora. Thanks for having me. I want to start by congratulating you. You have some awards. Yay. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate that. Book Amazing. three. The, yeah. Spiritual uh, spiritual healers. Yeah, absolutely. I'm so, so happy for so you great. and all the authors. That's great. Wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Okay. So, um, so I want to start this off by saying that the, um, the, you know, this show really is about inner resilience and strength and knowing what we need inside and what we have inside to be able to um, to manage our lives in a way that really works for us. Right. And we don't always have the choice about what comes and smacks us. You know, we don't, we don't, you know, I, um, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I used to call that the emotional shit kickings that we would get. We get them all the time and we yeah. don't have control over that, but we do have control about what's here for us. So, so I'm really happy that you're here and I'm really happy that, um, that you were able to look inside and I want to hear all about that. So, um, so one of the things that you talked about and just to get this going is um is that um silver lining right you, you know a lot of people can't go there <laughs> they can't go there they don't see that they can't and and you know and maybe they do over time but that's you know it's not an easy place to go to and and you know when i read your chapter and you know you knowing your story um it's clear that when you say silver lining you're not talking about just oh, oh well just look at the bright side you know, no. you'll be, you'll be fine. You know, it's not, it's deeper than that. So that's how I want to open here. And I want you to talk about what, you know, what your, what your experience was with finding that part of you. Yeah, sure. And when you talk about that inner strength, if you had have asked me two weeks before the event happened, um, and you told me, Hey, Nora, this is going to happen to you. And you know, how are you going to cope? I would have told you that I wasn't going to, that I would have fallen apart. Because I can think of things in my life that went wrong, nothing like this, but that went wrong. And I curled up in a ball and cried a lot and shut myself off from the world. That's how I dealt. And, and I needed time to process. And I think I still needed time to process. But all of a sudden, in the face of a tragedy, I, I had to start finding that inner strength. And I had to find a way to move forward. And so I don't know whether at the time I really did realize that there were silver linings. Some of them I did. Um, and there, there were interesting things like friends who walked up our driveway when nobody else would walk up our driveway. Um, and I realized those are true friends. I would say we lost friends through everything. I mean, I, you talked in the beginning, we lived in a small town. And I think at that point, we were 500 people. And uh, everybody knows everybody and knows everybody's business. Um, and that's a really great thing in good times, because people, you know, celebrate with you. And in bad times, people will rally around, but not everybody does. And there was no chance to be anonymous in our town. We, we couldn't hide and pretend this wasn't happening because everybody knew. But what we did find out was that we had some really solid people in our lives. And I'm not sure I appreciated them as much as I should have. But through all of this, I did begin to appreciate that. And I did appreciate what small towns have to offer in the sense that you do know a lot of people really well. So that was one. But my true silver lining was for me to begin to realize that I could do it. I could get through this dark, dark time and find the other side. And I think out of that, the reason why I chose the chapter that I title that I did was because in so many ways, I'm a stronger person now than I was 12 years ago when this all happened. Um, and that was a journey because we had a lot of dark days, a lot of dark days. 
Um, and I think one of the things that if, if you have read the chapter, which I know you have, but if other people read the chapter, I will talk about a point where I decided that I needed help. I, I, I couldn't, I didn't think I could do it on my own. And so I started looking for counselors, which because we had no money, everything was tied up in legal fees and whatever. Um, I was using EAP and I was trying to find a fit and I couldn't find a fit. And so what happened was, though, I think was that I went there thinking that there was a Band-Aid. I was going to walk in, I was going to tell my story, and they were going to give me the recipe on how to fix it. Just like when I go for a you know, strep throat or an ear infection, they tell me what to do to make it better. That isn't what's out there. So even though that's what I thought I needed, what I needed was people to help me on the, the journey. And so I took little pieces from this counselor, a little piece from that counselor, a little piece. And oh, how I wish I had have known about podcasts then because they have so guided me and helped me. Um, but I took all those little pieces and I started to look within because there was no solution that somebody could give me. There was no medication. So I had to start building strength from within in order to be able to deal with all the things that were crashing in around me. And through that, I think I did become stronger. And to me, that is my silver lining, that I found strength that I didn't know I had. Wow. Wow. And, and you know what? I, I, I want to say congratulations. That sounds really kind of wimpy in terms of what you, what you went through and what you were able to do. But, you know, being able to, um, to move from whatever's happening outside of us and shifting into what's happening inside uh, and having some of that awareness and creating some of that, um, you know, that understanding that yes, you can do this um, is, is awesome. So kudos. Well, and I think when I was looking for something to go with inner strength and I wanted a visual on my Facebook page, um, I started thinking and I, I, I came to a willow tree. And I, I always remember my mom talking about our neighbor's willow tree that I loved. I used to go over and play under the, the, the weeping willow, but that it was kind of messy, but it was strong, like nothing would would pull it down, you know, from that front because it was so close to the house. And so I did some research and it started talking about that willow trees are very strong, but they will bend. They will bend with the bad weather, but their root system is so strong and reaches out so far. And then, but it talked about the little bits falling off and, and that in a bad storm, bits will fall off. So I thought, well, that's not, that's not going to work for me. And then I was out walking and reflecting and I thought, this does work for me because I do think I have strong roots. My parents gave us very strong roots. My small town was roots and that we bent in that storm. Boy, did we bend and little pieces did fall off, but I didn't need those little pieces. And one was thinking that I had to have a whole big wide circle of friends and everybody had to like me. And what I realized is that true solid friends is what I need. And so there were little things along the way that I learned about myself that I had to, I don't need that. And so I did come back to the willow tree that's very strong and bends, but stay standing because I'm still standing. I never thought I would, but I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah. I love that, the willow tree. Yeah, it's, it's I mean, willow trees are gorgeous anyway, but yeah, to use that, um, to use that comparison in terms of who you are and the strength that you have is, is really, is very cool. I think that that's, I think that's something that people can relate to. Yeah, we bend. Yeah, you know, and little do. pieces go, but yeah. we still stand. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, the little pieces that go are pieces that we probably need to release. Mm -hmm. right? I think so. Yeah. 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 One of the other activities that, that we did um, when I was trying to find support, we landed on a support group for um, parents who had children who had committed similar crimes. Um, and so in that group one night, he had us do an activity where we had to create a pie chart and that pie chart, and I think I talk about it in my chapter too, but we had to list all the things about our child, all the things that describe them. And in there was obviously the crime that they had committed, but we also talked about they were a son, a brother, a cousin, a nephew, a grandson, um, an, um, an athlete, you know, all the things, and we filled the pie. And at the end of it, um, the gentleman leading the, the, the course said, your child is so many things, not just that one incident. And I, I piped up and I said, okay, I need to do this for me. And he said, well, thanks, Nora, you just ruined next week's lesson. And sure <laughs> enough, the next week when we went, we did that activity 
for us. And the first thing that we did was write in mother of a young offender. But then we filled in all the other pieces of the pie. You know, I was a principal, I was a teacher, I was an aunt, I was a sister, I, all these things that I was in my life. And the pie was so full, like there were so many things that I was, and that was one piece of the pie. And because there were so many other things, that it wasn't a huge piece of the pie. It was just one sliver of the pie that that happened. And so from that, what I took was that some days that piece of the pie was really big on court days, on days that, you know, things got thrown back in our face or um, our story was on the front page of our local newspaper frequently. On those days, that piece of the pie was really big. And I had to pull on that inner strength to get through those days to go to work in a very busy school when everybody in that community had just read the news story again for the you know 10th, 11th time. Um, but then I could let that piece of pie shrink back on other days and let those other things become part of who I was and not let that one piece of the pie be the whole, as I said, F and pie in my chapter. That is not the only thing that I was. And that visual flashes in my head so often. And I think other people need to go through that too on the days where, you know, wh whether it's something with your child or whether you're in a, um, a relationship that's not working, all those days that you feel like this is your whole life, it's not. You're so many other wonderful things. Mm -hmm. So balance out your pie a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's so, so true, isn't it? That, you know, when, it, when, when we have a piece that we're dealing with, whether, you know, whether it's big or small, um, whether it's happy or not so happy, it, it, does, it does change doesn't it? It just, you know, I could picture it kind of moving and flowing as you were talking about it. And what, what a great understanding so that you can, um, you, you know, that this, you know, the real negative, right? This, if this is big, really big today, it's not going to be so big tomorrow. And knowing that has got to, you know, fuel you as well. And I think I could keep us humble too, because some days we let these big glorious pieces of pie define who we are, but those are short lived things too. So, you know, eat some humble pie, make that, you know, that is a piece of who you are when you do great things, but especially in the tough times, it's just a piece of pie. It's mm -hmm. not the whole pie. Mm -hmm. So you can, you tell I'm a baker. I always have to bring everything back to baking or tarts. Or <laughs> 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 Maybe that's why that one resonated with me so much because I do like to do that. I don't know, but yeah. Well, you could have like a great big huge tart or something. And yeah, yeah. Pie. yeah. There you go. Like, yeah. yeah, tart pie. Yeah, yeah tart pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, and I think that's really important because I think we we have to we have to be able to mm -hmm. conceptualize in some way what's happening for us and to us. You know, I, yeah. think, I think we do. I think that's really important. And I think that's part of, you know, when we get when when something hits, um, and we can't, we can't conceptualize it in that moment. And often, I mean, that's trauma, right? It's, you know, we, we can't always do it. Um, when we can, I think it just becomes that much clearer to us and, and allows us to move through it in a very different way. So yeah, yeah awesome that you had the chance to do that. And, um, and I'm guessing that that's something that you're going to promote when in your, <laughs> um, as you want to support other, other moms. Cause I, and, and congratulations on that um i think that that's amazing i think that you uh, you and your story i think will really 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 help other moms in this situation yeah and i think that um i mean i, I remember saying to um our oldest when this all came down because it was it was pretty big and i can remember his first speeding ticket that he got and i was so over the top mad at a speeding ticket like over the top mad and i remember going to maxis and saying i'm over the speeding ticket i realized i was sweating the small stuff right the classic line but i was sweating the small stuff because that speeding ticket was just a lesson for him it wasn't the end of the world it wasn't anything other than that and so i kind of have to put things into perspective sometimes and realize like you know don't sweat the small stuff but get through one step at a time you'll get yeah. through everything right yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah so what else did you find when you were in here 
Um, I found that I was, uh, and I, I took a long time to realize this. And maybe even as I was writing the chapter for the book, my sister kept saying like so many other like wonderful things happened to you. Um, and I said, but that wasn't the moment in time that I wrote about. I think I have another chapter about being, you know, gratitude and all those other things, but also understanding people. So I did do years ago, I did some wonderful Stephen Covey training that was, um, changed how I looked at work totally. But one of the phrases in there was seek first to understand and then to be understood. And in the chapter, I talk about how people would avoid talking to me and, um, you know, it, it, people didn't want to ask about how things were going, whatever. And I was hard on people about that. Maybe sometimes I still am. But what I realized is that it wasn't anything probably more than nobody knew what to say. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to broach the subject, how to talk about it. They knew how devastated our lives were. They knew how our lives had changed. And so what I realized was that I have to give people a bit more credit sometimes and to try to understand where they're coming from. Not that they were, like, I always assumed they were thinking the worst. Um, that's just me. You know, I, I talk about being an awfulizer. I think about, you know, the most awfulest thing is going to happen, right? And so I always assumed that. And sometimes it wasn't awful. Sometimes it was just they didn't know what to say. And so that's one of the things I've learned about myself from within, you know, try to understand where they're coming from first. And that makes me a stronger person rather than judging people, understanding people. And that makes me stronger too, when we try to figure out where they're coming from. So that was one of the things that made me stronger mm -hmm. too. Awesome. The other one was another thing that made me stronger was talk to myself the way I would talk to someone else. So I'm a Weight Watchers girl. I have a revolving door Weight Watchers relationship. Um, it gets me back on track. But when I go with my girlfriends, I can be so supportive. Um, you lost a half a pound. That is awesome. Think about a half a pound or think about a pound. That's a pound of butter. Oh, you're doing great. Don't let this, you know, discourage you. But when I only lost a half a pound or a pound, I was so, oh, it's only a pound. Like I wanted to do so much better. And I, I'm so hard on myself, but I am so good at telling other people not to sweat it. And so I had to do a little bit of that with myself too um, in this situation that I was too hard on myself at times. And I needed to be gentler with myself and talk to myself the way I would if it was my friend going through this situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's another piece of that strength I had to find because we're so hard on ourselves. We're mm -hmm. so hard on ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and you know what, we're, what you're talking about is compassion, right? Mm -hmm. Compassion for others and compassion for yourself too. And what can be more loving or, um, or kind than, than practicing compassion, you know, to be able to, to, as you said, to be able to realize that, you know, not everybody is equipped to respond in the way you, you would want them to. Right. Um, they're going to chew and that's human nature, right? We're going to, we're going to react to whatever as we will based on our own experiences, right? Um, and, and it makes me think of something like, you know, when someone dies, when we're uncomfortable, what is it? Or, or um, sometimes not just uncomfortable because it's kind of a Facebook thing too, because you don't have a whole lot of space to write anything. <clears throat> right. But, you know, there is that, you know, I'm sorry for your loss. So you can express that. You can't, exp you know, there isn't, there isn't a line for every single thing that happens to us in the oh, world. Oh gosh, no, you know? no, so, there's not. So to, yeah. yeah, to recognize that I think is really, it's not just good for the other person because, you know, you, I think we burn our bridges when we don't, when we can't be compassionate, but you, right. um, you know, we're helping, we're helping ourselves by reducing, I think that negativity just within us. Yeah. That's and then right. to turn yeah. it into your own, you know, the whole, I can't, you know, well, you know, I, I only lost a pound. Well, that's a big deal. But to, yeah, to be able to talk to yourself too in, in that compassionate way is um, yeah. is growth. It's it's love. It's love for you and it's love for other people, which is, I you know, I, I know you well enough to know that um, that's that what lives in you. It right? does. It does. Um, I used to have a, a joke with a few people that I had to learn to be a duck because duck lets water run off. And so for me, the water was the negativity that was out there. Um, and the negativity that was living with inside of me. Um, so I had to be a duck, let it, let it roll, let it go off. I'm not saying don't listen to suggestions and helpful advice, all of that. But when there is negative stuff going on out there, and there were lots of negative people, and probably rightly so. 
But a point you, you can't let all that soak inside of you. You have to let it roll off. Be a duck. But be a duck. So if you, I waddle a lot, I guess. I don't know, right? <laughs> but, but, but I had, I, I, I couldn't internalize everything, right? And I think that was part of my journey too, is that in the beginning, I owned the crime. Um, and I guess I came back to, if, if you have children who are doing well, and people say, wow, you must be so proud of them. Like they're doing great. And you're like, yes. And the, the feathers are, you know, we're, we're the proud mother hen or duck in my case. You're, you're proud of that. And, and I think we do take a little bit of that on ourselves. Like, wow, I, I did a good job. So when your mm-hmm. child does something unthinkable, I owned it too. Because I can't take the good moments. And so I was walking around with shame and guilt as if I had done it all. And then one day, one of the people that was assigned to our case to help us because of the fact that it was a young offender said to me, um, we were talking about you in the office the other day. Well, so the first thing I was like, great, everybody is talking about us. But then he said, you're a victim too. And this light went on. And my first thing was to say, no, 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 no. But he's right. We did not choose to be in this situation. And I think overall, we did do a good job raising our children. What happened that night, I, I, I don't have an explanation for totally. Um, but we were good parents. Something happened. And we were victimized from that. I mean, we have, we've given up a lot. We had to move from our small town. Um, we probably ourselves could have stayed there um, in the sense that people were okay with that. Some people weren't. Um, but our son could never go back there. So if I wanted family, which is so part of my heart for family to be together, we had to move. So we gave up my, I grew up in that town, raised my kids in that town. So we had to sell our house, which meant we moved further from our friends. Um, We lost a lot. Right. Um, But I wasn't, I wasn't the, the person who committed it. And I had to keep telling myself that. Mm-hmm. And so I could only own so much of that in order to get through. Doesn't mean I don't know that there's things I could have done differently. It doesn't mean that I've, I've totally said, ah, ah, whatever. However, I couldn't walk around as if I had committed the crime. Mm-hmm. I had to have that strength to know, no, nope, I lost two and I'm a victim. How am mm-hmm. I going to deal with that? Mm-hmm. Right? So, yeah. yeah. And it totally changed my the way I looked at things. Yeah, I can imagine that it would, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, that's separating behavior from beliefs, you know, self beliefs, um, because things will happen. We're not, you know, we're not, we're not perfect in this life. No one is perfect. And we all have a path that we need to follow that we, you know, in my belief, it, you know, was set for us long time ago. So, um, you know, as we're going through that, if we, if we simply focus on that human experience that you know, makes us think something different or something negative about ourselves. And we carry that, you know, how do we ever, how do we elevate, you know? So, so when you're, and, 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 you know, I'm going to go back to what you said about, you know, being the duck. So, you know, how do you now, even today, because, you know, things, you know, this will follow you to some degree for the rest of your life. Forever. Yeah. (laughs) So how do you, um, how do you maintain that? mindset and that, you know, how do you, how do you let that roll off? What do you do to strengthen you keep yourself strong? I I think it's coming back to the whole idea that I have to accept that people have their opinions. um, And I have to respect that that is their opinion. I'm not going to change them, whatever. I wish I could tell them the whole story. They might, they might know things that they didn't know, but that's not my job. My job is to just deal with what I can deal with. So there's a lot of, you know, things we do differently. I mean, I said, when we moved to our new town, normally I would have put a sign, you know, welcome to, and our our family name there. And we didn't because we just didn't want people to know that that was us because they would know. Um, But I think overall, we just have to know that we are moving forward, doing the best that we can for us and that people are entitled to think what they want. And Lord knows I was one of those people. If if a a kid in town did something or one of my students did something, I was a little judgy. Wait a minute. I was a lot judgy. I was judgy, (laughs) right? Very judgy until it happens to you. And all of a sudden you realize that, you know, bad things happen to good people and good kids sometimes make bad choices. And luckily for most kids, they pay a price, they get away with it, whatever, but they change who they are, right? And so I think you just have to know that 
every day you take as many steps forward as you can. And I'll tell you, and, and you would know this about me, I take a lot of steps backwards. And sometimes I just do. Sometimes I fall back down that mountain well, like that I'm climbing, but I always get back up and start climbing again mm-hmm. and pick up where we are because there are going to be setbacks in life. And the, you said about this story, it doesn't go away. Um, if this crime had happened 30 years ago, it might have gone away a little bit easier in the public eye. But all you have to do is Google and it's there. And all you have to do is, you know, um, go on social media because people keep thinking it's necessary to keep republishing things. Um, and so it's not going to go away forever. The, I mean, I, I can say that in our, our small town. So I can't let it bring me to the depths of despair all the time. And so I just have to, in some point, say, that's okay. I, that's what they need to do. Here's what I need to do. I need to dig from within. Mm-hmm. So we're back to that place, you know, where you can't change what's happening outside, but you can rely on who you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. There's, here's my circle of what I can do and how I can look at things, right? Yeah. So, yeah. and I think too, like I, I can be a little fiery at times. And so there have been times where I, I talked about one in, in the book where somebody posted um, the news story on Facebook and I was like, I just I was nasty with that person. Um, instead, I finally got enough to say, you know, I'm really, I was really hurt that you reposted that because our family gets reminded too often. And the person was, I didn't try to make them feel little or bad. It was just, I don't think you know that when you put that back out there, it's not just me, it's my other three children who then have to see that all over everywhere and bring it back. And so the person was like, I never thought of it that way. I just thought I was resharing a story that was a big story. I didn't realize. And I think sometimes it's okay to tell people what the impact of what they just did has on you right mm-hmm. not in a and you, way and you did it with compassion yeah yeah and i mean we're that person is my friend like not just a facebook friend you know those people that you never see like i mean i see them you know fairly often but i think in some ways she probably appreciated the honesty and the, and the ability to look at something from a different perspective and mm-hmm. think oh my gosh i didn't realize when i just do that one post share that it blossoms and goes everywhere yeah absolutely yeah mm-hmm. yeah so tell us about your intention in terms of supporting other moms. Well, and you know, it's funny because sometimes I think moms and then sometimes I think anybody, because what happened to me happened as a mom, but it happened as a professional, um, you know, very high profile in, in our small school board. I was pretty high profile. Um, and so I think, you know, it's a, somebody to listen to. So nobody had my story and I, I, nobody else is going to have my exact story. But people have stories and things that, you know, kick their ass and knock them off their feet. And so I think the fact I was looking for someone who could support me on the way. And it's funny because the way that I got support was through a couple of things. There was Shannon Maroney wrote a book called Through the Glass. And she had been in a relationship that had a devastating twist similar to ours. Um, and then um, there was the book of uh, Facebook. Oh, I have her name here. Hang on. Uh, Cheryl Sandberg. And she wrote about option B because when everything happened and it was a cancer diagnosis in their case, but what happened was that, you know, the doctor said, what do you want? She goes, well, I want this, this, and this. And he goes, yeah, you got to move to option B because this is not the option. And then recently, um, Maya Shanker, who her podcast is called um, a slight change of plans and her career had to change because of an injury. So I had all those things. I went on a detour in life that I didn't want to go. I mean, who likes a detour? You're driving to your destination. You've got this beautiful end in sight and you're going to go. And then all of a sudden you see detour ahead and everybody goes, oh, right. You don't want the detour, right? You don't. And so I know there's so many people out there that have had the detour and I survived my detour and parts of it were rocky and not the smooth sailing that I had, but we had some things that came out of it. One was our son was moved to the East coast. And at the time that this all happened, as I said earlier, we had no money before and we really had no money after. And I went uh, one time to, to watch our friend's daughter get married. Um, I just wanted to go outside the church and see what she looked like and, you know, the whole bit and, you know, what small town people do. Um, and as I'm standing there, I suddenly realized that everybody else in our circle of friends was invited to the wedding. Like everybody else was invited to the wedding, but we weren't. 
and I wanted to hide. I started to have a meltdown. I crumbled, I fell, whatever. And I wanted to get out of there. Well, there was no way out without being a spectacle, just the way the whole thing was set up. And so as I'm trying to hide behind some cars so nobody can see the tears streaming down my face and the understanding of what I had, that I had lost that. Not that that's the most important thing, but it symbolized mm-hmm. so much that I had lost. Of course. One of the friends who lived on our street walked by me, said hello, went up to the church, and then turned around and came back. And she said, if you and Dave ever need to get away, we have a little cottage on the Cabot Trail. And it's, it's yours. It's yours. And I was like, thank you. But then as she walked away, I was like, as if we could afford to go to the East Coast. Like, what? Anyway, little did we know, our son was transferred not far from there. And so I called her up one day and said, offer still there. And so we went to the East Coast. Lifelong dream of mine. Probably what would not have happened had this not taken place. And we stayed in a little cottage um, on the Cabot Trail. And that's a silver lining in the sense that it was what we needed. Nobody in that village knew our story. We could walk down the street, not worry, but somebody talking about us, not letting any of that happen and just get away. And the rent was, I had to leave butter tarts in the freezer. Mm. Don't get that. You don't, you don't get that kind of a deal very often, right? No, you don't. But, but that is one of those silver linings, but also the gratitude to the, to that family for, for being so kind and to take what was to me, a real tipping point for me in that realization of all the things I'd lost to start to look at the new things that I gained. Mm -hmm. And so I think that with other people, they might not be seeing the gratitude. So I think if people reached out to me, we could walk through, like, I know how hard it is to be a parent. Um, I know what that journey can be be like and that it's got its pitfalls. I can help those people. I can help others, but also I want to help them to see that even little things celebrate those little things that are gratitude i mean we have a a bin that we have never thrown away of cards that people sent us and you know you think that sending somebody a card well i don't know what else to do i'll send them a card you know and people would throw throw in some would throw in a tim hartons gift card or you know a gas card whatever because they knew but to think that that many people took the time Mm -hmm. to think of us right and so i think there's so many little things that we can sit and be grateful for that I would be able to sit down and talk with somebody and say tell me your story and I can empathize with that person but I can also help them voice out all the things because there was nobody to talk to really because nobody nobody knew nobody nobody could relate right and so I wanted somebody that I could talk to and so eventually we found that in that support group like as as what a crazy mixed up group we were to all be in that same boat but what what a great boat it was it was our lifeboat to have gotten into that boat with those people because we could talk about getting through a difficult time yeah wow wow yeah you you have much to offer I'll tell you somebody will be will be very lucky to connect with you yeah, well, and sure. you know, I think I think when I was teaching, um, I talked to you, you quoted in the beginning, but when I would go to interviews, it's just it's your philosophy of education. And I'd say it was to make a difference. That's I, I want it to make a difference. It wasn't until much later in life. And it really came to play when this tragedy happened was that what I was always doing was helping people to see their strengths in order to overcome their areas of need. And when we look at di- diagnosing a learning disability in the education field, really a learning disability means that the student has all these strengths, but here's a weakness. And so they have, that's what gives them the learning disability is that gap between here's what I can do and here's what I am doing. So our job as, as educators and in the special education field was to say, here's all your strengths. How can you use that to be better? And so I, that, that really was what it was. My, I was making a difference but I had the wrong lens on when I looked at it. I had the wrong lens. I was looking at it for what what am I going to do? I'm going to fix him or her. And instead it's how can they help themselves? They're not broken. They don't need to be fixed. They just needed to be supported and find their inner strength in order to be able to overcome those things. Mm -hmm. So on that note, what is the one thing, one piece of advice you would give another, another parent? Don't beat yourself up. Just, don't go down that dark hole that we went down um, and know that support, supporting your kid. I mean, my kids have learned unconditional love. I mean, this, this child that committed this is very much a part of our lives. I mean, we go to visit them, they come here, um, we didn't abandon them. And so unconditional love, 
you will get through it, unconditional love. And so when we used to sign into the youth facility to visit, week after week after week, we were the only names in the book. And I forget now, there might've been 20, 20 young offenders there. Nobody came to see them. And we kept being told, you're an anonymous. Like, no, the, like most parents would have walked. They would have walked. And my thinking was if we walked, we didn't know that he wouldn't have committed the crime again. But our hope was that through unconditional love and supporting through this really horrible time, that this will never happen again with this person. And so that's the support we gave. Mm -hmm. So I think knowing that you have the strength inside of you to help them, it doesn't mean every day is going to be great. Oh, Lord knows. I mean, I talk in the book about driving home from work and tears pouring down. I couldn't even see the, the road, but I got through the day. I got through the day. Mm -hmm. And I think I, you know, I, when I, when I went to work each day, I tried to leave as much of my baggage at the door as I could so that I could walk in and make it a good day for my staff and my students and the parents in my community. And so I was criticized in some ways for that. Like if I was in my office and we were laughing about something, people were like, how can she laugh? Life goes on. You get through the dark days and laughter is what heals you and helps you move on and supportive people. Mm -hmm. So that's what worked for me. Do I, do I find fault with somebody who says, I need a, a three month leave because I've got something going on in my life. If that's what that person needs, that's what they need. But I needed to go back to work. I went back to work a week after the incident happened, um, which was interesting because um, somebody called the secretary and said, book her off, she's not coming back, book, uh, book her off absent to the end of the school year. And so they called me and said, are you okay? Like, you know, because there were rumors out there that I tried to take my life um that I'd been fired um there was all kinds of rumors out there so the secretary was a really close friend of mine and she said I, I just need to know that you're okay because they say you're not coming back and I said I'm back on Monday morning because that's what I needed to do mm -hmm. doesn't mean that that's what this person needs or that person mm -hmm. you have to you, you have to listen to you and know what you can do yeah so yeah absolutely and you have a Facebook uh, page. That it's new. Yeah. It's, it's up. It's just getting there. It's called inner strength with Nora Emery. And it's talking about all those kinds of things. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about all those things that I've talked about today is what I want to do. I'm hoping people will reach out to me through that page because everybody needs an ear and everybody needs somebody who can say, I get, this is hard. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that Facebook page is up and running and we'll be at it too. And there'll be some little live moments on there and there'll be a few uh, video clips and some, some pieces of advice that I think made me stronger through the whole process. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you you've, you know, you, you've been on here, you've been very vulnerable. Um, you've been honest and you've been open and you have shared your heart and you happen to have, and I know it is a, is a, um, um, it's a light above you, like an actual light above you, <laughs> yeah. but, but it's coming down. If you can see, the, <laughs> that's the, right. I don't know what down. that's doing. That, that's you know, I, it. I just think that's, that's the spotlight and that's, you know, that's just lighting up even more, which is yeah. beautiful. It's so, funny because I'm looking at it, things I didn't say or whatever, but I was, um, that, that, that whole, um, one about Bozo the Clown, I would you remember that in my chapter, but when I was a child. I watched Romper Room. I want it so to be on Romper Room. And, um, but there was a clown on there and you'd hit it and it would go down and it would come back up and it was smiling. And I think sometimes in life, I've been that person when I'm dying inside, I would still come up smiling. And in some ways in the book, I talked about that as being a bad thing, but it's, it's also a good thing because even after the darkest and the worst of everything, we have so much to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there is light. Mm -hmm. We, there is light. There's light. There is light. Yeah. There is light. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again very, very much for uh, for being here. Much appreciated. And um, yeah, everybody take a um, take a gander at um, at Nora's page, Facebook page. Um, you will find that in the show notes. And um, and you listeners, thank you for being here. Um, you know, and I say this at the end of every show, so you're going to get used to it. <laughs> I'm sure or you probably are used to it, listeners. Um, every time you show up, even if you're just listening or you're just, you know, absorb a little bit or you take a little bit or that was kind of neat and I could, you know, integrate that somehow. 
whatever you did while you were here or on any of the shows, you are kicking your own ass. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here and I will see you next time. Thanks, Diana. If you like today's podcast, hit subscribe at the bottom on your way out and come find me at cravemorelife.com for even more DIY ass kicking.